What's up, fanatics? My name is Robert Joyner. Welcome to the tutorial or tutorials where I will share three beginner friendly watercolor sky techniques. We will start at the very beginning, which is a simple gradated sky. We will level up for a cumulus cloud sky and then finish with an electrifying, brace yourselves, storm cloud sky. A lot of fun stuff, lots of great information packed into these videos. These are uncut videos, so grab your paint brushes and paint along with me. Of course, if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and ring that bell so you don't miss any content. And if you like the videos, please give it a like, show your love, I appreciate that. So let's get started. All right, welcome to the first sky and I'm going to lay out a rectangle here. Now I'll leave a little space on the side over here just to test my colors for the demo. Because we're going to focus on sky, I want the majority of it, um, you know, sky, and I'm going to move this horizon line way down here. Okay. So for this one, I'll use my Mottler brush for no other reason than. It can put a lot of pigment down and this will be a very simple painting and we're going to build upon it though. Things are going to move pretty quick but starting with a very basic sky, very basic technique is the way to go and then of course each time we do a sky it'll get a little more challenging. So, um, a little bit of water there just to soak the sky area. I left the land dry, okay? So I didn't wet all of this down here. Now, I'll clean my brush, give it a tap tap, a little bit of water down here, just a little bit. And then I'll take a little bit of my cerulean blue I want this fairly weak, okay? Clean my brush, get into the fresh water. Maybe a little more water. And remember you gotta go a little bit darker than what you want, okay? So finger test tells you there is water, but it's not real soupy, okay? Because if it was real soupy, um, that would backfill pretty quick. Now I'll start at the top and go nice and smooth. Don't go too fast or you may get the roughness of the paper. Okay, so if you go fast, uh, it won't spread it as evenly. I can go up and down if I want for this one. It's not going to hurt it a whole lot. Now I'm going to go a little bit more paint into this. No water though. And then I'll start at the top and work my way down. And maybe once I get down uh, towards the bottom there, I'll sort of back off of it. And a little more paint. And I'll go a little bit darker towards the top. Again, sort of kind of letting that stop towards the middle of the sky area and a little more paint here like so so that's a gradated wash so what we have is a sky that's going to be a little bit darker towards the top than it is at the bottom and we did that basically with uh, using less water so we pre-wet the paper I used a little bit of clean water to start with added some paint to it Got a pretty thin mixture and then put it down, applied it to the whole space, then added more, a little more paint, did just the top area and then repeated that process. Okay. And that's going to give you this sort of result. It's not going to look the same. If I did the same gradated wash on the same paper with the same brush and the same paint, it's not going to look the same the next time. It'll be similar, but it's not going to be a perfect match that's watercolor you're dealing with a wet and wet surface okay 
wet paint, wet paper, wet brush. It's hard to get it the, the exact same. Now, for the sake of just finishing the piece here, I'm going to use a little bit of yellow ochre and I'll apply that to the ground area here. It's okay if it bleeds, um, so we can touch that blue area a little bit and that's fine. Now if I wanted to get a subtle gradation like I did in the sky, I'll actually turn this upside down. I can take a little bit of this burnt sienna and just sort of run it right along the bottom there, okay? And that'll give it a subtle gradation. Now I want to add just some small trees in there just so we can, the first demo, and every demo we do pretty much um, you know, has a, a painting to it. And then that way you can see your progress and have something to show for your work. Um, so again, the colors were cerulean blue and then I just simply added a little more paint uh, to the top of that okay so just something like that and then I used a little bit of our yellow ochre and then a little bit of burnt sienna into that now I could have used a little more ochre too so that's sort of what we have and I'm going to take a dryer to this a hair dryer and get this sort of dry and then I'll just finish it off real quick with a few trees so fairly dry I didn't really dry it up here uh, just really where the sky meets the land I'm going to use my small pointed around this is my number six, six Princeton Neptune I can just take what colors are here is fine. So it's basically a little bit of brownish yellow with a little bit of blue. Now I'm going to add a little bit of turquoise to that. If you don't have cobalt turquoise, you can use a little bit of cerulean. That's fine. A little bit of yellow ochre. Okay, that's, that'll give me a pale green. So the finger test says, you know, that's sort of soupy, but it's still got a little yeah. bit to it. Um, it can go a little more water if I wanted to, but I don't. I want it to be a little bit thicker, so I'm going to add a little more paint to this. Maybe even a touch of this cad yellow pale. Get all that excess water off, okay, very important. Uh, load the brush up, and then um, we can just kind of come in here and then add a few strokes here uh, just to suggest some trees. A little bit of vertical interest uh, something like that now I don't want the trees to be very big though so notice how small all of these trees are and that gives the sky a sense of scale so it makes it look uh, a little bit bigger and this may be something in there all right so now I'll take a little bit of my ultramarine into this and I can touch uh, just kind of dots. That's all I'm doing, just adding a few dots into those trees. I can take a little bit of my ochre now into this so we get this sort of brown color. And we'll do the same thing. So we're just, again, uh, adding a little bit of interest uh, to this. And maybe I'll put a slightly bigger one uh, back in there and I can even take a little bit of my ultra blue into this so I'm just getting a little bit darker color here maybe add a little bit of sienna to it and maybe we'll add a few cast shadows so some of these maybe um, are sort of taller and they're just kind of getting uh, this sort of thing here And I'll 
take some of this burnt umber. This is umber rather, just raw umber. A little bit of blue, a little bit of my yellow ochre. And again, just kind of playing with a few dots um, to finish it off. So there you go. Um, so a lot of those greens were just made with the blues and the yellows I had on my palette. Okay, so we got these sort of greens. And then in that, I just played with the same idea of working wet into wet. I dropped some yellow ochres, some umber and burnt siennas, and to get that look of just some distant trees, okay? So keep it simple. The goal here isn't to really paint a finished piece but it's just to sort of start small with this gradated sky and then we'll build upon that. All right, we're gonna build upon that simple gradated sky. And again, I'll leave a little area here for my swatches. Again, a very low horizon, okay? We're gonna focus on skies. I'm going to switch brushes, so I'll go with something uh, a quill, so something bigger and not so square. So my number eight. I'll clean it off really good, give it a tap, and do it a few times. I haven't used this brush today, so. And then some fresh water down there. Uh, I'll start with cerulean. And very weak, and then I'm going to do a gradation. But this time, uh, we're going to do some other techniques there that are going to uh, create this cloudy day effect. Not too cloudy. We're going to just some maybe light, fluffy cotton balls or something there floating in the sky. Maybe a little more water. You can go uh, left to right here, up and down. And you can kind of turn your paper maybe towards a light source and see, um, you know, if you've got everything covered. We don't want it um, uneven, so you don't want it uh, to puddle up anywhere. So just try to smooth it out. If you have good paper, it shouldn't be a problem to go back and forth. If it's cheaper paper, you may find that, um, you know, sort of start to break your paper apart a little bit. So it'll start to, the surface will get a little bit fuzzy. Um, now, uh, I'll use, again, cerulean. So a little more water here and then a little more paint. So the finger test tells you, yes, it's got water, but it's not too soupy. And that's what I want, okay? Something like this will work just fine. All right, so I can work left to right. Uh, I mentioned earlier that you can go up and down too, but obviously if you're uh, doing a sky and you want it to be darker up top, uh, then you wanna work horizontal. So left to right, right to left is fine. Um, I just said that uh, just because I knew I was doing a first wash and then I would come over it and do a second one. And then I would work that second one left to right, and that would sort of give it a gradation where it's darker up top and lighter at the bottom. So I just want to clarify that just to make sure there was no confusion. Now you'll see that sometimes it's streaky, so you can see these horizontal streaks in there, and that's, that's normal. Um, because my board's at an angle, because it's all wet, um, it's going to smooth out, you know, it'll sort of even itself out um, as it dries. Now, I want it uh, fairly dark um, towards the top again. Uh, instead of using the same color, I'll switch to uh, ultramarine blue. And maybe a little more cerulean. So a little bit thicker paint, a little bit thicker paint. And I'm going to, again, add that darker blue uh, towards the top. So working left to right. As I get towards the bottom, um, you know, I'll just sort of let that bleed into each other. 
And again, you'll see a distinct line now, but again, gravity, water fusing, colors bleeding, um, that's going to look just fine. Uh, while this is drying, um, I'm going to just add a little bit of land there. So I'll just come over here on the left, right hand side of my palette, a little bit of ochre to start. I could do green too, but I think this will be just fine. And now I'll do the same colors for now. Cause again, I mean, it's not really about the land at this point anyway. But I just want to give you guys a, you know, a nice complete painting here um, that you can have for your studies. And just a little more sienna maybe um, at the bottom. I can sort of streak that across the land in a few places too. Okay. So, paper towels. Um, you can use tissues. Uh, toilet paper. Um, the main thing is don't use a uh, paper that has lotion on it. Uh, lotion sometimes can be oil based and that oil isn't going to mix very good with your watercolor. So just make sure it's like non scented and, and that sort of thing. So I'm going to and make sure it's clean. So I've got a little bit of uh, color there, but it's not going to hurt. And then I'll sort of ball it up and get this kind of roundish looking shape. Now, what you don't want to do is a bunch of dots that are all the same size, same shape. So the idea is you'll sort of hit the paper and then drag it a little bit and then do uh, different sizes and things like that. So hopefully um, I will illustrate that as I get into it. So, um, so you see it's sort of just dabbing, right? And maybe in the distance, the clouds get a little bit smaller, okay? They're further away from us. And then maybe I can do a nice big one uh, in here. Okay, so just a few cumulus clouds there. And that's a, a nice look. Now what we can do is build upon that a little bit okay um clouds are three-dimensional um i think sometimes they get thought of as just they don't have any um form to them but let's say for example our sun is up in the sky and we have these clouds that are floating uh below it so Clouds are basically these sort of cubes, different shapes. They may be long, right? They may kind of have this. They may be small if they're in the distance. They may be really tall, okay? But as the sun hits the top of them or the fronts or the sides or whatever, um, they're, they get they're lighter okay so they have their they're whiter up here then underneath they have a sort of a shadow right like that so underneath this and that shadow is because again the light source is hitting the top of the cloud or the front of the cloud or whatever way the sun wherever the sun is in the sky Sometimes if you have a low sun and it's a sunset, then the sun, the, the color is hitting underneath the cloud. So the shadows and all that will be up top. But in this case, the sun's high in the sky. So our shadows are underneath. And you know these things have volume because as the sun hits these guys, if this is our land, they actually cast, clouds will actually cast a shadow on the ground, okay, or the water, or whatever the surface may be. So that tells you they have volume. Um, so that's sort of what we're doing here um, with this exercise. I'm going to switch to my small round here. And I'm going to get sort of a bluey gray here. So I'll take a little bit of my sienna into these blues, and that'll be fine. That's like all the color I need. And I'll sort of create 
um, this kind of grayish underbelly uh, for the clouds. Now, as things go away from us, okay, so as, as clouds get in the distance there and they move further and further away from us, they're going to get lighter in value, okay? Things that are closer to us are darker in value. Okay, I'm just going to soften some of these edges. So what I did is I applied the color. And I went in, I cleaned my brush, get clean water, get all that excess water off, and then you can sort of soften those edges a little bit. Now I'm going to take a little bit of this water and dilute this. So we got really soupy water uh, mixture here. And then in the distance, this color is going to be a little bit weaker. Okay, these, these are further away from us. So in nature, that's going to make it lighter in value, okay? Now I can take a little bit of my umber, a little bit of blue, a little bit of sienna. Actually, actually that was a lizard and crimson. That was bad. Let me try that again. Sienna, blues, umbers. And I'm going to mix something that's a little bit thicker. And, you know, we can sort of dot uh, some of this in here as well, okay? So just on the clouds that are closer to us, okay? So that, again, gives that illusion of depth uh, in the landscape. Kind of connect those a little bit. So that is a simple way to add the, that sort of those cumulus clouds that gather in the sky. And what we'll do in the next lesson is build upon that and we're gonna do this sort of layered uh, effect, okay? But before we break away here, let's talk about colors. So for the gradated wash, I used a little bit of this cerulean blue. Okay, that's probably a little too strong, so I'll add a little bit of water there. And then I added a little bit of ultramarine blue uh, to that wash, okay? So we got that sort of layered look. Uh, then we use our paper towel to lift. I added a little bit of burnt sienna to those blues. And that's going to gray it out, okay? That'll give us sort of this gray and created the clouds. And then for the land, we did a little bit of ochre. I added some sienna for gradation. And then I went back into it with a little bit of umber, a little bit of sienna, a little bit darker, and sort of enhance those shadows a little bit. Now I'm going to take a dryer to this and just to finish it off, um, we'll add a few trees. So I'll use uh, my pointed round here. If you start to get these hard edges like this, um, you know, you can blot it out a little bit. Uh, just don't go into it too much. There's another little hard edge. So again, you know, take that napkin and blot it. And if it's dry, you're not going to get it, but it's no big deal. It's still a nice cloud. It sort of gets the point across of what you're trying to say. So a little bit of turquoise. If you don't have turquoise, again, you can use cerulean. A little bit of that cad yellow pale. A little bit of ochre in there. So the ochre has a little bit of red in it. And it'll kind of muddy up the greens a little bit. And I'll do a little bit of ultramarine in there as well. Maybe a little more of this yellow to punch the green. So finger test tells you that's pretty thick, probably the thickest paint we've used so far for this demo. And again, we're gonna do uh, just some trees in here uh, just to kind of cap it off. And I'll mix a little bit of these reds in there, that's fine. And maybe we got a sort of a taller tree here, something like that. And I'll touch some of those uh, colors uh, into 
Uh, just a few other areas, and then we'll get these sort of yellowy colors um, just to indicate a little variety in there. So I'll take some of these grays that are on the palette, maybe add a little bit of blue to it just to cool it off. So finger test tells you that's pretty weak and that's what we're after. So we can sort of do, again, kind of these real simple shadows um, along uh, the landscape there. So something like that. So again, we're getting that a little bit different feeling, a little bit fluffier clouds there. And it all started with the gradation. All right, a simple gradation, uh, a cloth, towel, whatever, napkin, paper towel, Blot out your clouds, add a little bit of gray underneath. We know why that happens now, right? And that's, that's the deal. Make sure as you go back in space, uh, the color gets a little bit weaker, right? So a little bit lighter in value. And I'll just take a little bit of water and dilute that. So we can sort of add just some grays in here and kind of connect them even. And there you go. So a nice simple way um, to create this sort of fluffy cloud day. That's all, that's the best I got. This is the only description I can come up with right now. And hopefully it's uh, something, again, we can build upon in the next lesson and add a little bit more complex complexity to our scene. Okay, so a multi-layered cloudy sky. Again, building upon our previous lesson. And we'll pre-wet all of this. Now I'll actually just take that water right down into the land here. Shouldn't hurt anything. So back and forth, up and down. Okay. So with the sky, a gradation. So we'll keep it uh, the same theme here. A little bit of turquoise in this one. So if we, if I did the finger test, very weak, and that's good. So I'll start bringing this down, get to our land, clean my brush, tap, tap, get that excess off, and maybe even touch a little bit of ultramarine so now a little gradation here you can see it's starting to kind of pull up a little bit in that corner and that's fine I don't don't freak out about stuff like that um, again we're not perfect humans aren't perfect I should say the medium's not perfect and that's going to happen now, while that's setting up there, I'll add a little land. So just a fairly uh, weak ochre here. Um, so just running that across there. And obviously, because I wet it, everything here, um, that's going to do some bleeding and it's not going to hurt us. It's not a big deal. And now I'll take a little bit of sienna uh, into this and just sort of touch it in a few places like that. Flip it back over and get my brush clean. I'll remove some of this. Take the paper towel here and we're going to dot out some clouds. So same technique, 
outcome. So some, and remember, don't uh, do a bunch of clouds that are all the same. Don't do same sizes. Uh, try to keep the cloud formations uh, interesting and maybe even sort of one in the distance there. So that'll, that'll be good. I don't think it needs to be much more than that uh, while it's wet. I'll go ahead and add a little bit of gray. So I'll mix that using Sienna, Ultramarine, uh, fairly weak, maybe a little more blue into that so it's not too gray. And because we used a paper towel um, on this, uh, it's going to be dry. But so just wet your brush, but remove that excess water. Very important that you do that. Um, or it's, you're going to be sorry you didn't. So a little more water on my brush just to make this gray a little bit weaker and maybe something like that. So again, just a few. Touch of white in there. Uh, just something like that I think will work. Good. Remove that hard edge. Now I've got to let things set up a little bit. So I want this to dry 100%. And then I'm going to come back with these uh, another layer of clouds moving in towards the middle and, and sort of distance. So I'll, I'll take a hair dryer to this and I'll be right back. All right, nice and dry. Um, I will just use my quill on this next setup here. So lots of blue, maybe even some cerulean. Touch of alizarin. I made a mistake last night of leaving the lid off my watercolors. And things have dried up a little bit, but they're not so dry that uh, I have to completely uh, toss them in the trash bin. I'll just have to keep softening them until they loosen up. All right, so that's very violet. Um, so before I forget, I always forget to do this. So with the gradation, in the sky that was a little bit of cerulean and a little bit of turquoise now we uh, re blotted out some of those we added some grays uh, for the clouds the land mass was a little bit of yellow ochre and a little bit of sienna well, now the sky is going to be this sort of violet color. That's my main base, but I'm going to add a little bit of umber to that uh, just to remove some of that intensity. So I want it, I don't want it to be so violet that it looks too happy. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. That's all I can come up with there. Um, so what I mean by that is, it's basically gray clouds, sort of this sort of stormy situation. Now, I'm going to wet it right in here. Uh, don't go too close. I'll kind of come back, something like that. Now, I'm not going to disturb it. You know, I don't want to get in there and you know, start um, moving that around because that could easily agitate the wash underneath. I don't want to do that. So let's make, let's just do it like this. We'll turn it in this sort of angle, just so we kind of throw our vision off. Um, sometimes when we look at things upright all the time, uh, then we get these this predictable result. And I don't want to do that. So finger test tells you that's fairly thick. And now don't go too far up in the sky. Okay, we want to sort of keep this. Uh, in, in here, so sort of kind of moving uh, into the scene here. Um, we got this kind of cloudy, stormy uh, situation. And that creates 
some excitement. Uh, we don't really know. And it's just sort of, you know, mess it up a little bit, get a little wispy uh, action with your brush, but, you know, don't go too far with it either. So that's pretty good. I'm going to remove all that paint. So just a damp brush now and remove just a little bit of this in here um, just to create a little more uh, movement and a little more dimension uh, in the cloud. So I'll take my small pointed round, again, clean it, remove the excess and uh, soften a few of these edges. Okay, so that does a pretty good job there. Now, this is gonna dry a little bit lighter. And what I will do is let it completely dry and then I'll come back and um, do one more layer for the land. So I'll take it, hit it with a hair dryer, and I'll be right back. All right, I'm not sure if the camera will pick up on it, but it's noticeably dark, uh, lighter in value now. And that's sort of you know what you have to anticipate with watercolor. I think the mistake is to mix and put down a color that you need and you say, oh yeah, that's perfect. And then by the time you put it down and it dries, it's, it's not perfect. It, it dries too light. Um, so now just a nice thick mixture here of green. And I'll sort of do uh, some We'll do just a little bit in here. Uh, we don't want to, again, do things that are too big. Uh, keep, keep it fairly small. And I'll go a little bit darker here. And maybe I'll do sort of a, kind of a little bit taller uh, bush or tree or something there. So something like that is good. So for that land, you know, we did a lot of those, used a lot of the violets that were already there. And I'll mix in you know, a little bit of these ochres and just to kind of, you know, give it a little variety in there. And maybe I'll throw a little bit of blue in there. And we'll maybe do a few shadows. Or something like that. We can do a little splash in there. So I can get a really dark green here. A little ochre. Something like that. So, yeah, so a really nice effect, I think. Um, multiple layers, obviously, a, a little more challenging uh, than what we've done, but that's that's what we're going to do in this class. You know, things will start, the idea of whatever it is we're focusing on is going to start out uh, fairly simple, and then little by little, uh, we make it more challenging and that's what we want to do. So I can even lift a little bit of that maybe let's try something here. That's all right. Now, I don't want to get too fancy. Uh, this is all about the sky. Multiple layers building upon a simple gradation blotting for white clouds a little bit of gray underneath those bellies to give it that dimension. Um, 
letting it dry, a little squirt there just to kind of make sure we don't go back on a complete dry surface. That's going to give you areas of the paper that are wet. Some areas will be dry because this is not going to cover everything. It's going to sort of splatter on the paper and that's fine. I didn't, I didn't spread it though because I didn't want to disrupt the wash underneath. Just because the watercolor is dry, this paint was dry, doesn't mean you can't disturb it because you certainly can. Um, so then we put that down, we lifted some light areas in there, uh, let it dry, and then came back and added the illusion of a landscape.